Good evening, Coach Dorsey, Pat Freeman for the Buffalo Criterion newspaper. How are you today? Good, how are you, Pat? I know there were some concerns from yesterday. I hope I didn't jinx you last week when I asked you about the uh, interceptions that Josh was throwing. I said that the ones that he, th the few that he has thrown in the course of the year were more competitive. And last night he even admitted that the two interceptions he threw, he wished he could have had back. What do you say to him as a coach uh, he knew uh, those weren't the best thrown balls, but what do you say to him as a coach? And also, if you can once again talk about the efforts of Devin Singletary and averaging 4.8 yards a carry. Yeah, I mean, we just, uh, in terms of Josh, we just look at on tape and break down, you know, was it decision? Was it fundamentals? Was it um, uh, kind of a freak act, you know, just a freak occurrence type thing? So, you know, we, we look at all those things and uh, and make sure we're learning from them and making sure we're, we're going forward with, uh, um, you know, learning from those things to make sure we could correct and, and uh, try to make sure they, they don't repeat. So I we, that's that's a good part about today is uh, there's a lot of good tape to learn from for, for Josh, for all our guys and, and uh, able to kind of move on and, and put that game to bed and, and move on to next week. So. Um, and then Devin, obviously, he's, he's done a great job for us. He continues to just grow in his role, continues to uh, do whatever is asked of him, uh, um, as big or little as of that role uh, it may be, and um, really has done a, a great job just uh, running, running hard, running physical, uh, making plays, getting tough yards, lowering his pads. Um, you know, a couple, couple runs yesterday really, you know, they after contact, gets contact, but they can go – get us a little bit more and get us into a third and third and one or get us into a second and short uh, to, to really help us. So he's been doing a lot of good things for us. All right. Thanks, coach. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ken. Um, you know, I know we've talked a lot about the running game this year and about um, the faith that you have in all three of those guys, but it seems like you've got, you've kind of moved into a direction of, you know, leaning more heavily on Devin and then obviously sprinkling in James Cook this past week. Um, do you feel like it's been more effective? Maybe not so much saying what what it says about Zach Moss, but more so about just giving more opportunities to Devin and then allowing James Cook to kind of have his role in not only the run game but the pass game. Yeah, and again, I mean, we we love Zach. I mean, he he's he does a great job for us whenever his opportunities come up. So I think that's just a byproduct of of just kind of the nature of of the flow of the game and and kind of how things are going and um, uh, you know more so that than anything. So. Uh, I think Devin's done a great job and, and James and has done a great job um, whenever their, their numbers have been called and uh, whatever we asked them to do. Um, so that was just kind of the nature of the flow of the game last night. And uh, that very well could change, you know, in, in future games. You just you never know kind of the, uh, the direction a game's going to take. So uh, everybody is very fluid. I think everybody's really, um, really all on board in terms of doing whatever they need to do to help us be successful on offense to help us win football games. And, and that's what I appreciate that about that room, especially. And Sean mentioned, you know, James Cook having like a very rookie like start to his career, some maybe early struggles. What have you seen or have there been any specific moments over the course of the last few weeks where maybe some lights have gone on for him or he's just maybe gotten more comfortable with the playbook? Anything that you've seen that's allowed him to kind of grow and, and have some of the success that he had uh, yesterday? Well, I think it's just uh, the, the nature of, of getting touches, getting carries, being out there. Um, I think it's true in, in a lot of positions. We talk about a lot with the quarterback, but I, I think it's true in a lot of positions that the more reps you get, the more you see, the, the more it's just be, you know, the, those instincts kick in more than you're kind of thinking about your, uh, your landmarks in the run or your read uh, once this, the nose goes one way or whatever it might be. So um, I, I think that has a lot to do with it, just getting his reps and, I thought he ran extremely hard last night and uh, and really you kind of see him getting comfortable in, in what he's doing. And, and I think a lot of that just becomes it is a product of, of less thinking, more just uh, uh, reacting to uh, based off of your instincts and based based off of knowing how to play the position. Mm -hmm. um, and last one, sorry to squeak one more in, but, uh, you know, we talked a lot about like the attack minded nature of your offense. Your players have talked about you know how much they like your demeanor in that department is there kind of like a fine line though like in a game like yesterday you know we mentioned the, the fourth quarter interceptions with Josh like 
when, when it's a real chippy game, it's a real chatty game, you're going back and forth, you're competing and, and trying to attack versus having a lead and maybe being a little bit more conservative. How, how hard is it to manage that maybe that thin line that might exist there? I think, you know, at the end of the day, we just take the approach of uh, our goal is to go out and, and score points on, on each drive. And, and we're just going to do whatever we feel like is best at that time to do that, whether it's run, whether it's pass, whether, it, you know, it's a gadget, whatever that might be. Um, I, I just think that's, that's the best way to approach it, approach a game until uh, we get in a mode where, um, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of told different, you know, uh, either from, uh, just kind of the flow of the game or, or what have you. So I think you saw that last night. Um, you know, we did get into a little bit more run as the fourth quarter went on. Uh, but at the same time, when you're, when you're playing an offense uh, led by Aaron Rodgers, as potent as they can be, um, uh, you know, when you do start getting in trouble is, is when you start, you know, uh, not being yourself. Um, you start, you know, trying to, to prevent Aaron Rodgers on offense versus you going out and trying to score points. So I think that's that's important for a part for us is, is just keeping our identity and, and understanding that we'll 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 do whatever we feel like we need to at that time to help us win a football game. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. No problem. Hey, Ken, when it comes to getting ready for this week's game on going up against the New York Jets, what do you guys have to be? ready for looking for in terms of just how strong of a defensive line they have and, and some strong secondary players as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously they've got uh, a really good combination of talent and scheme. They do a great job over there coaching their guys and uh, playing sound, fundamental, fast, physical football. So uh, it's a great challenge for us. They've got, obviously they've, uh, you know, done a, done a really good job there kind of, putting a defense together of, of a group of guys that play extremely hard and, and uh, have some, some speed to them and, and some uh, ability to go sideline to sideline, get penetration and all that stuff. So it's a great challenge for us. Um, uh, one that I think our, our guys are going to really, you know, be looking at this week to, to really be locked in and, and really help them focus in and, and be ready to roll. What stands out to you when you watch Sauce Gardner play and what he's been able to do just as a rookie in the NFL? Uh, he's got great length. I mean, he's, he's really kind of settled in in terms of just his recognition, his feel, his instincts out there. I think, again, he's a, he's a player. He's probably, you know, thinking less, reacting more um, just from, from the amount he's played up to this point. So I think, uh, obviously, he's a, he's a very talented player and they do a good job with uh, um, playing to his strengths of, of what he does well uh, in terms of what they ask him to do. So he, it's a it's a great challenge for us on the outside uh, to compete about against not only him, but but a few guys in that secondary who, who are all pretty, pretty good football players. Thanks, Ken. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ken. George Radney, Challenger Community News. How are you doing this afternoon? Good. How are you? Great. Uh, yeah. Still, a uh, question from last week, continuing to this week. What is it when you guys get inside the 10-yard line, you guys don't want to uh, run, play power football? No power. You, you go back to passing the ball again. And once again, last night, it seemed like you guys went to putting the ball in Josh's hands instead of giving it to these uh, backs and, and just powering that ball into the end zone. Well, we're just going to, we, we feel like, again, our, the best way to approach whatever field position we're in is, is do what we feel like is, is best at that time to score points. And um, I think, you know, we felt like uh, uh, that was a situation where we can do some things. We, we were, uh, we, we were trying to mix it up down there. We had the, the sweep to De uh, Isaiah for a touchdown there and we ran the ball a couple of times and threw the ball a couple of times. So Obviously, down there, we just got to make sure we're, we're putting our guys in the right position to have success and, and executing. Yes, because you feel it, as the weather is, the leaves are already falling on the ground and winter's coming up pretty soon. Uh, December, January football out at Highmark uh, will be uh, some, some instances you won't be able to pass. You're going to have to run the ball a little more. Uh, again, I think it's going to depend on that week. It's going to depend on, on the week and, and what's the situation in the game and the opponent we're playing. One, and last question on the Jets. Uh, C.J. Mosley, he seems to always play well against the Bills. How do you see him uh, just from the early film that you uh, looked at for the upcoming Jets game? Yeah, very good player. Uh, been around the league for a long time, been in that system for a while, so he knows it. Um, plays plays uh, extremely fast and uh, 
he, you know, he's got a good feel for, for what offenses do, I think, just from, from his experience. Excellent. Thank you very much. Good luck this coming Sunday. Thank you. Coach Dorsey, Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports Today. How you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm good, Coach. I'm good. Um, yesterday, you know, always coming off the of bye week. We all know how that is, right? But um, what situations yesterday you didn't like your offense being in, and how were you able to get out of those situations? Um, yeah, I mean, I think just in general, I think, you know, uh, it's a, that's, that's a good question. I mean, I think it's, um, one of those things where each week is so different, you know, I mean, I think it's, it just, the week kind of changes, obviously, you know, like to come out with a little bit of a faster start than going three and out. And then, uh, so, so part of that is just then getting into the, uh, the rhythm of the offense. Once, once that happens, I think that's, uh, that's a critical piece so you could get a little momentum and, and get going. So I think the biggest thing for us was, uh, was getting the ball rolling. And then once we did, we, we felt good about where we were at and we were moving the ball and scoring some points uh, throughout the uh, going, you know, through those first three quarters. Absolutely coach. And uh, we all know, I mean, you've played the game, right. You know, so now you're on both sides as a coach now getting in sync, you know, during the, the bye week, how much does that make a difference? Well, I think, you know, after, especially kind of when you're, when you're in a little bit of a rhythm uh, going into the bye, you know, you, you go into a bye week and you're, you, you definitely, you worry about losing it and you got to uh, get back into that rhythm. You got to get back into that routine. You got to get um, back into, you know, the, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday approach each and every week. So um, it, it's, it's definitely kind of one of those things where, uh you always want that rest and, and the guys need that and it's important for them, but uh, you definitely want to get back into that routine and, and get everybody feeling as comfortable as possible coming off the bye, um, you know, in, in, in some familiarity. Absolutely coach. I know you got another one ready for this week. Good luck. Thank you. Julia, Lucy, Channel 2. Um, as a uh, noted fiery competitive guy yourself, I don't know if you noticed the way that uh, Stefan Diggs and Jair Alexander were kind of chipping at it last night. W what is that like for a player? And there was, you know, some more chippiness in the game. Does that affect you uh, throughout the game, positively, negatively? I think every player is different, to be honest. I think every player, you know, part of that, uh, sometimes get some going part of uh, some guys want to stay away from it, you know, so uh, I think every player is a little bit, a little bit different, every team and every uh, side of the ball is a little bit different. So, um, you know, I think uh, I probably handle it a little bit different than maybe Steph would and, uh, and Josh would and, and all these guys. So, you know, I think it's, uh, it's part of the game. It's, it's the competitive nature of the game and, and uh, kind of how things go. You just never want to uh, affect kind of, the um, the outcome on the field and and understanding that hey that that stuff's going on but there's still one main focus one goal uh, and that's you doing your job to help us as a unit and us as a team to win a football game and and I think that's what those guys did a a good job for, for the most part last night of no matter what was going on with with anything uh, on either side of the ball the most important thing was getting the win and and we were able to do that. Steph had over a hundred yard game. So Steph in particular, uh, what does that say that, you know, there were those extracurriculars going on about the fire he has in his belly? Oh, I mean, yeah, he's, he's, he's a competitor and that's what you love about Steph. He's uh, he's a guy that's willing to step up to any challenge. He's willing to, to do whatever we ask him to do. And we've asked him to do some, some different things this year that, that have been outside of what he's been asked to do before. So Part of that's just, uh, uh, you know, him and his nature, but a lot of that's just the competitor of it and, and, and wanting to compete and be put in these different positions. But yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's fun to watch him because he, he really is, he embodies kind of what you want from, from a guy in terms of just the passion, the, the desire to win, the, the desire to do whatever it takes to help his guys, you know, his teammates and the guys around him, whether it's clearing something out for Isaiah or Gabe or, or blocking for uh, Isaiah on the jet sweep. He did a great job blocking and making sure, uh, you know, his guy didn't come off and make the tackle in the end zone and, and blocked him, you know, in the end zone for a while there. So that stuff is, 
you know, it's easy when you're catching balls, but you can, when you can do that stuff, you know, that, that, that other stuff that, you know, um, a lot of guys, you know, just don't, don't necessarily want to do. He, he's willing to do those things. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, Ken, Josh Reed here. Thanks for uh, taking some time this yeah. afternoon. Hey, the, Josh. Um, uh, they were able, uh, Josh got sacked twice for two yards, not exactly high impact sacks. He just mm -hmm. kind of floated out of bounds, you know, as he got to the yard marker there. Um, the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think the Chiefs got to him once. The previous game, the Steelers didn't get to him. What have you seen from the pass protection up front as the season's gone on? No, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, they've done a great job up front. And and you really, I think, start to see that group gelling together. And, and obviously, I think uh, Aaron Cromer, uh, Ryan Wendell do a great job with those guys and, and really get them, uh, get them prepared. And uh, whether not only from an X and O standpoint, but a technique standpoint and a working together standpoint. So even when we've had to plug some different guys in there and, and some different roles, you know, Quiz came in and did, did a great job for us uh, uh, this week. And um, you know, they've really kind of stepped in and, and, and done a really good job for us. So, so excited about those guys and, and what they've been able to do from a protection standpoint. And then I think you're, you're really starting to see, you know, what they're, what they're doing from a run game standpoint as well, uh, creating movement, being physical and, uh, giving our backs and abilities to get to the second level. Do you guys talk a lot about the four minute offense? You guys get the ball back there with six minutes to go. I know you'd want to end the drive with points, but you bled all their timeouts. You had the ball <laughs> and you got the ball near midfield. What does that kind of drive do at the end of the game? How, you know, were you pleased with that drive at the end of the game there to bleed that much clock off? Yeah. I, I mean, those things are critical, you know, especially again, when you're playing a guy like Aaron Rodgers on their side who could, who's done throughout his entire career, some, some amazing things at end of game. So uh, that was big for us to be able to, to burn some clock and, and force them into using some timeouts and create a, a tougher situation for them. But, you know, there's obviously some stuff there we can learn from, too, um, you know, from all over just kind of uh, uh, executions wise and play calling wise to really kind of help us seal that thing and, and maybe keep the clock running there at the end uh, to try to force them into a little bit tougher situation. Great. Thanks a lot, Ken. Appreciate it. Have no a good problem. day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. That's all for today. Thanks, Ken. All right. Thanks, guys.